So I did some feature testing on my new Prusa i3 Mark III and the video got long. So I really wanted to make this hopefully a quicker video to give you kind of a summary just in case somebody doesn't want to watch. It was like 30 some minutes, but I just couldn't cut it down any further. So I do apologize for that. Um, hopefully this will get you the info you need. Um, stick around and hear what I found out. I'm Ron and this is my place. So I did the testing. Um, the biggest things that I wanted to test were the features that were actually a big part of why I bought the printer and that would be things like the power panic, the filament sensor, uh, the skip detection, layer, you know, layer shift protection. Um, they were kind of the, the important pieces. I mean, obviously the quality of the printer and everything else, but I really was interested in the, in the features and of course the bed. The bed was probably the number one. I really love the removable bed concept. Um, so anyways, to get to it, to try and keep this short as possible, I, did, I started off, we'll talk about the power panic. I really thought that was just gonna be a no brainer and it would work and I'd move on. And I had major problems. The first time I threw the switch on the supply, the whole thing just fell apart, meaning when I, it, it didn't work, there was no power panic. When I tried to resume, it had lost all the bed calibrations. It just, it went crazy. Part of that I ended up finding out was I had somehow or another, the thermistor from my bed ended up getting out of kilter and it was causing some Y-axis and issues. So I'm kind of gonna just, just discount some of the issues that maybe that was what was going on but it shouldn't have made it not it should have caused it was it would explain the layer shift problem from the power panic but it should not have caused it to not try and save uh, so i'm going to count the layer shift to me so that i'll give you that one long story short power panic i tried it four times and it failed had to recalibrate everything, went through the entire wizard again, and when I got done with that, I started removing power from the actual power supply itself, and it started working just fine. Recovered just like it should, worked fabulously. Went and removed the power from the wall, and again, worked fabulously. So I did it three or four times in a row, and it hasn't failed since. So I really don't know what happened at the beginning, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you it was flawless because it wasn't. Um, it caused a lot of problems. It was kind of kind of frustrating, but um, learned a lot about it. It was interesting. Okay, so there's that. Um, then I went to the layer shifting, and the first thing I did was I tried to stop it by shoving the extruder, which after some research and looking around, even though I saw Prusa do it at the uh, New York Micro Fair. I swear that's what he did. I'm gonna have to pull that video up. Um, it didn't work. So he must have been paying attention and when it was sh going towards him, he pushed away you know, against it and it stopped. Um, once I got where I was pinching the rods with my fingers and let the extruder hit my fingers, it worked almost every time. One time it did actually skip and didn't stop. Um, but for the most part, it seemed like it was working. And to be fair, that would be the time that it would work. I mean, what you're trying to protect against is it bumping or hitting something and causing a layer shift. So I don't know. That one I think we'll have to see. Um, jury's kind of out on that one in my opinion. Uh, but it did kind of work. Uh, it, it did what it's supposed to if I tested it the right way. Um, filament sensor worked fine i did not check the fact of like clogged nozzles so where it would just stop printing so it was to see the movement of filament but as a detector it, it worked fine i cut it it went down moved out of the way let me reload filament easily and then resumed on um, that worked just fine the uh, i did a check the pause print feature and that, that was actually good that worked as well um no issues it actually was really nice because it moves it out of the way and then slides the bed towards you at the bottom it was pretty you know you can see it a little bit 
that was when I was upwards of 400%. So it's still printed fine. It's just lo what you would expect. It lost a little bit of quality. But to be honest, on some printers, you would look at it and say that was good. Um, and then when I slowed it back to 100, you could certainly see that it got way smoother and nicer. And then it finished off even with detail in the face. And that was 400%. Granted, I don't know if it actually would get up to full speed, but it was impressive. So features, did it work? Some of them did, some of them didn't. All of them kind of worked. All of them worked in the end. Power Panic worries me because it literally was 50-50 um, on if it did anything at all. Um, not sure why. I'll probably contact um, Prusa, the company, and kind of get input. Um, so yeah, don't know. I've got it running right now uh, off of the Octoprint, so I'll do something, a follow up on that as well. So anyways, I just wanted to give you this as a quick summary. Hopefully you'll um, get what you need out of this. If you're interested in any of it, I've also got a, the longer video that has all the info in it. You can go kind of dig through that one as well, and hopefully you'll find something that uh, is interesting. Uh, I learned a lot from all this, and uh, thanks for watching, and print everything you can, 